everybody. Let's uh, get started with our first session for this school year. I know we ended May 23rd and uh, we're carrying things over. So uh, we're going to start with check in. Who has a mic that would like to start? All right, Rob, go ahead. Can I see the? Yes, would you mind turning the phone? Oh, so sorry. I haven't seen it enough over the years. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Robert Dodig. I am well. I am the executive director of human resources for the school district. I have no time constraints. We have um, Mr. Burnside, Heather Leonard, both missing. Um, Dr. Johnston will be late and Dr. Jessica Duncan will be late. What's next? Um, I have no elephants, and I would like to make progress this evening. Okay, thanks, Will. Hi, I'm uh, Will Rothenberg. I'm Director of Compensation and Labor Relations for the district. Um, no time constraints. Um, missing on uh, the district side is noted. I can't read the impacts on the talc side, so I won't try to guess. Um, no elephant expectation. Um, make progress. Thank you. Amy. Good afternoon. My name is Amy Desimore, and I'm fine. I'm the chief financial officer with the school district. Uh, no time constraints, no elephants, and my expectations are that we make progress. My name is Kevin Kelby. I'm doing well. I'm the director of payroll. I have no time constraints. Missing has been noted. No elephants, and expectations make progress. Good afternoon. I'm Ben. I'm the principal of Asia Elementary. Uh, I have no time constraints. Missing is noted, no elephants, and expectations to make progress. Ann Cole, I'm well. I'm the principal at Clusa Middle School. I have no time constraints. Missing has been noted, no elephants, and expectation is to make progress. Hi, I'm Mike Gatewood, Director of Internal Auditing. I have no time constraints. Missing is noted. No elephants. Expectation make progress. Hello, I am Helen Martin. I'm the director of professional development. I'm doing well. I have no time constraints. Missing has been noted. I have no elephants, and expectations of you to make progress. Hi, I'm Suzette Rivera. I'm doing well. I'm the director for recruitment. I have no time constraints. Missing has been noted. No elephants, and my expectations are to make progress. Good afternoon, this is Chorus McIntosh. I'm an assistant school board attorney for HR. Um, I'm doing well, my expectations make progress. I have no time constraints. Uh, um, this evening today has been noted. No elephants in the room. Good afternoon, my name is Michael Robichaud. I'm the director of insurance and benefits management. Um, I'm doing well, no time constraints for me. Missing is noted, no elephants in the room, and I will go with make progress. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Kurt Fazone. I'm fine. I'm a uh, chief negotiator for Tauk. Uh, no time constraint, missing on our side. Missing Mario and Shay. And Lewis will be a little late this evening. Uh, expectations make progress and no elephants. My name is Kevin Daly. I am the president of the Teachers Association of Lincoln County. I have no time constraints. This thing has been um, noted. No elephants, and we'll go with make progress.
Hi, I'm Jill Castellano. I am the Vice President of the Teachers Association of Lee County and a full-time teacher at Cypress Lake Middle School. I'm doing quite well, but like my other teachers, I'm exhausted. Um, you know, starting school year is tough, especially in our understaffed schools. We've already noted who's missing. I have no elephants, and my expectation is to make progress. Good afternoon. My name is Anna Witten, and I am fine. I am a fourth grade reading teacher at Franklin Park Elementary. I am also secretary for the Teachers Association. I have no elephants, missing is noted, no time constraints, and my expectation is to make progress. Good afternoon, my name is LaShonda Hutchins Cologne, and I am well today. Um, I'm the grades three through five math coach at Franklin Park Elementary. I have no time constraints, um, Miss Kent's noted, no elephants, and the expectation is to make progress. Good evening, my name is Amy Johnson. I am well. I am a, a sixth grade ELA teacher at Mariner Middle School. Um, I have no time constraints, seven o'clock sounds good to me. Uh, missing is noted, I have no elephants, and sure, I'll go and make progress. Good evening, my name is Iris Grimaldi. I am doing well. I am a school social worker, and I'm currently assigned to Lehigh Senior High School. I have no time constraints, missing has been noted, no elephants, and my expectation is also to make progress. Good afternoon, I'm Christina Starrett. I am a K-5 art teacher at Tortuga Preserve Elementary. I have no time constraints, missing is noted, and no elephants, and make progress, please. All right, thank you, everybody. I don't think we've had anybody come in until too late, so. Um, on next on the agenda is approval of the minutes. The minutes were from May 23rd when we decided to take a little hiatus until tonight. So, can we have any corrections or deletions from the minutes from that time? If anybody has any? First. Just checking my notes, I think there's an error on page two related to the straw designs. Um, I had straw design A being the districts that wasn't voted on, including options one through five, and straw design B being the one that we did vote on being options one through six. Um, 522. And according to my notes, straw design B, options one through six, was the one that passed. So are they mislabeled, Kerr? Is that? I think so. Okay, yeah. All right. I think the first one should be one through five, and the second one should be one through six. Got it. Well, what's, what is circled is what we agreed to, correct? Except for it's missing six. item six. Six. They said A should have been one through five, B should have been one through six? Correct. And we agreed to B. Yes. With the circle correctly, just didn't have the right one. Anything else, Kirk? No information. All right, Amy? Hey, Will, I just have some uh, capitalization errors and spelling errors, and I already made them on the, like, highlighted them on the document. Want me just to share it with you? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. That quick and thin, quite a bit. All right, any other completions or deletions? With that, can we accept the minutes as corrected? Please. All right, the minutes from May 22nd are accepted as corrected. Thank you. Now, um, since this is a continuation from May, the norms are still printed on the bottom of your comment agenda. 
So if, um, if you want to take a quick look, anybody have any additions to the norm? We had quite a few pretty expensive for our norm. So I don't think we need to start all over again. All right, everybody okay? Continuing with those norms? I don't need to sit down, so I'm just anybody's not okay, let me know. Yes, I know. Um, all right, so I would like to have Lewis check in, please. And we are. Oh, I put it in back here. Sorry, Lewis. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Lewis Fisher, director of music at Gateway High School. Um, doing fine. Um, have no time constraints. Uh, missing has been noted. No elephants. And expectation is to make progress. All right. Thank you, Lewis. Thanks. I think his name on there. All right, the next thing on the agenda is the calendar. This is our first meeting, and normally we do every other Monday. I know we scheduled for the spell cut last week. We scheduled them for every other Monday. So um, you want to continue with every other Monday, and how far out do you want to set date? Sir? I believe the next Monday is Labor Day. <laughs> yes. Well, I think we have um, the room reserved on Mondays from like here until the end of all time. Um, but I think I think we maybe had scheduled in the spring. We sent out the email invites for every other Monday from here until December, with the holiday days off um, and an alternating spout and down. So I don't know if there's any dates where like there wouldn't be a meeting that we would need to limit it to a Tuesday or Okay. Thank you for that So then uh, So that means the next session that I have a calendar invite for is the eighteenth of September, is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But we're willing to meet on the fifth. Everybody okay with the fifth? Anybody about understand? Everybody okay with the fifth? All right, then let's schedule for September fifth, Tuesday, September fifth, and then it would continue with the other every other Monday. The next one would be on the eighteenth of September. Everybody okay with that uh, calendar? If we run into any glitches, we know we can always we're flexible. Sort of. Why is there on any other meetings or anything? So can I see thumbs with that calendar, please? Just to be sure everybody's okay. Great, thank you. Calendar is done. All right. Now the next thing on the agenda is goals for our FY24, 23-24 school year bargaining. I know we had a list of things that we did at the end of the meeting, May 22nd. So, um, anything that needs to be added to that, taken away from that? <coughs> yes, we had some things listed from May 22nd of open items. It was titled on, on the minute from the 22nd. So, are there things we need to add to that, Rob? I think I think there's a couple things we need to subtract from that. Okay. Um, we agreed to an MOU regarding turnaround. So if you look at the hollow bullets there. Yep. 
It's the what? One, two, three, four, sixth one down. The second item, salary supplements, then it says turnaround. Yep, see it. So we did that MOU. We also did the MOU for BSI schools. Okay. And I thank Talc for that. All right, but I need to get that down. Okay, Kevin. Some of these items, like salary supplements, have a monetary component, and so um, not to get too deep too early, but um, you know, um, yeah, is there any talk of? Separate money for supplements, or is it all bargain authority money? Yeah, I'll just say our authority is our authority at this point. But it's not broken up at this point. Okay, thank you. And to put something else on the calendar, are we planning, um, Jesus, I hope we're done before we get talking about insurance, but are we planning a joint session when insurance needs to come up as well? We certainly can. Yes. Okay, thank you. Anything else about that list or anything we need to add to it? So we might be able to take things away from the list. All right. With that out of the way, um, our next thing was story 10 compensation and article 12, the ever present article 12. So, um, you want to start with Article 10 story or Article 12? Yes. I think 12 is probably the best place to start because weren't we kind of waist deep in that already? Okay. Well, I think we were going to have the red line to you all for review in the next session. Um, although I, I think there was an outstanding issue that we maybe we could get to before talking about um, what that red line would include. Yeah, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> too, much. too much loud rock and roll music as a kid, so yeah, just gotta give me a minute. We'll bring up the overflow soon. All right, go ahead, Will. Um, so I, I think that uh, we've got to get you guys the red line for Article 12, and I think there was one unresolved issue that we left off when we got to Article 12. I know we had talked about um, the additional day that could be used towards personal leave, um, but I think there was a, a question about um, there was there was the question still hanging out there about um, compassionate leave. Correct. We already increased or had a TA to increase the number of personal days from five to six uh, or days that you can use sick for personal use. Um, I'm just I'm just going to say compassionate leave is in your your other contracts. It's are you is there an issue with the district not providing the same type of leave to talc bargaining unit personnel that's already afforded to salary schedule in and uh, administrative? Yeah, I'm actually looking for the red line version, so what it says is there. Okay, I'll give you a minute to see if you can find that. So in, this is the latest red line that I have. It's item H, uh, I guess this is 12.06. I'm kind of looking at this on the fly, 12.04. Is this the 
This is compassionate. So maybe it's 12.04, but it, it's item it's item H. Loss of pregnancy um, can be frightening, lonely, and traumatic experience for an employee and their family. Employees are entitled to leave for 10 working days within a 12-month period. If an employee or family, you don't have to capture everything, sorry. but if an employee or family or household member experiences a miscarriage, ectopic pregnancy, or molar pregnancy. So again, this was just another way that an employee could use their own accrued sick leave. This isn't the district giving leave or additional days. So, um, and the same with bereavement. I believe that was up an item. Oh man, bear with me one second. So uh, it was a little. Uh, it gave employees the ability to use um, their their sick leave due to death of family, household member, father, mother, brother, sister, husband, wife, um, and the like. Anything else on that? I just have a question yeah. just for clarity's sake, and I know Kerr, I think Kerr said this, so all those things would be new bases for leave, there would be no additional leave dates, correct? Well, the answer to that is maybe. How are you treating your administrators and schedule them? Are you making them take their sick time when they get this leave they already have, or do they have a separate pot? There's no separate pot. I, I'm not sure. Okay, then, then the answer is yes, our own time. I didn't want, okay. you know, right. the administrators and schedule that already were granted this. We're asking to be in alignment, and I just want to make sure that if the administrators have a separate pile from which to use these two types of leaves, the teachers also did. No, Jackie said no, they don't. Okay. Um, anything else, Kevin? Yes. Just kind of waiting on the answer to the question, what's the problem with providing it to employees when you already provide it to administrators? I, I don't think anybody over here said there was a problem. Well, I just got the language two seconds ago in front of me, so I apologize. Okay. I think, you know, I think this is the exact language that's in your schedule and an admin contract. So again, I mean, I didn't get it much before you, but I'm, you know, I can put an option up that we include, we include so the we current bereavement and, you know, compassionate leave language as listed in the admin and schedule and contract to be included in the TAL contract. Leave to my schedule and contract. Yes. Bob? Yes. We're going to ask for a caucus. Okay. All right. Um, the district asking for a caucus, which means everybody else has to leave the room. Well, uh, or are, you are they going to caucus? Because if they're not, are we, can, we can leave. Guys? Yeah. You are going to call us? Okay. Okay.
Yes, you do. Uh, we had a long, relatively long, sorry for the length, relatively long discussion and also had to uh, run some things up the chain. Um, the result of that is we would like to come back on the 6th, 5th um, to discuss this um, a little bit more. Um, not opposed to either item, just want to um, review the language and um, see if there's anything we need to possibly amend in there um, before we come back on the 5th. Okay. And Kerr, Hawkins report from Health. We had a lot of good discussion around the option. Um, this isn't new language. Uh, we've been talking about Article 12 uh, and specifically compassionate and bereavement leave since March, I believe. Um, the language is copy and pasted from your administrator and scheduled in contract. Um, and there's really no fiscal impact. It's just another way of your current employees to be able to use their leave. I mean, it's we we're losing teachers to to some other counties. Um, you know, specifically Hendry. Um, Hendry allows for bereavement leave that's out of a separate pot from people's personal leave and sick leave. We're not even asking for that. We're just asking for folks to be able to use the leave that they've accrued for situations that are just emergency situations that require, for lack of a better word, compassion and grace. Um, you know, the, the major protection in this language, especially with, regarding compassionate leave, allows for the employee to keep the information confidential and immediate supervisors aren't allowed to you know, request supporting documentation. I, we think it's the right thing to do and frankly are a little surprised that we're not able to, to move forward tonight, especially since you're already doing it for two of your other employees. Thank you. Jill, is this in regard to the caucus? Um, yeah, or the story of uh, something in the okay. One of the things that we also discussed with the caucus with the compassionate leave is making sure that our teachers have the space to not only because this did the leave does reference miscarriages and other types of issues with pregnancy that that gives our employees the space to go through a traumatic experience in private and get any counseling before we ask them to go back into a classroom and care directly for the children of a, someone else's child. Um, we also talked about why this would be so important in a teacher unit, because historically, teachers, historically teachers are usually female, and we see more males move into the administrator role, that language like this would be especially important in our teacher contract language. All right, thank you. Rob? No, no disagreement with anything that was said. We're just asking for your indulgence until the fifth, that's all, or the sixth, I'm sorry. All right. The fifth, the I fifth. can't get that date right. <laughs> Labor Day is the fourth, correct? Right. All right. right. All right, anything else on that? Hold it to the fifth and get it settled in. I suppose. All right. All right, um, Art as well, we're holding off on so everybody has the red line copy. And so that leaves Article 10 compensation, starting with story. Are we ready to move forward with that? Kevin? Our starting pay is $6,000 lower than the surrounding five or six districts. Okay, hold on, let Amy get that down. With the ongoing increase in cost of living, especially housing, our current salaries make it difficult for teachers to afford housing in this county and stay here and teach. Okay, 
Okay, Kevin. This one has been a few years, and we fixed it a little bit with the increase in longevity, but compression continues to be a problem throughout the what we would traditionally call the salary schedule, even though we don't have one. But across years of experience, compression still seems to be a real problem. All right. Her. We're still on story, correct? Yeah. It was, uh, there was a lot of deal of talk um, at our last talk rep meeting around um, an increase in certain administrator salaries from uh, a few board meetings ago um, that people uh, still remember quite well. Okay, thank you. Anybody else have anything else to add to the compensation story? Kevin? The teacher shortage, that is not my bargaining unit's fault, <coughs> continues to force people to cover classes when they would traditionally have planning. Okay, Jill. In the midst of a shortage of people who want to be teachers, we continue to have more workload put on us with reduced planning because of coverage and less compensation. Therefore, teachers are putting in more hours outside of their contractual day in order to get their basic job tasks completed. Okay, hold on a second. Let's make sure Mark got all that. There's, yeah, we have to work more outside of our contract dates, which means we're doing a lot more free labor. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Bill again. Also in the midst of a shortage of people who want to be teachers, because I don't like to say teacher shortage, because we have lots of people who are qualified and able to be teachers, they're choosing not to be. Um, there's vacancies nationwide, so there are options for people. And if we are not competitive in our salary, then we are going to continue to lose people to other areas, not just of Florida, outside of Florida, um, because there's options everywhere. Okay, thank you. Let Mark catch up with that, and then we'll walk to the list. While you're walking the mic. I don't like this at that Hold on just a second, folks. Thank you. <coughs> okay, go ahead, Liz. And on top of the uh, salary is keeping teachers. Um, we're also losing potential teachers as uh, college students are, the rate that they're choosing to be educators is dropping drastically and this is nationwide. Supplements. Okay, sorry. Okay. We're talking a little fast, aren't we? Okay. okay. Um, supplements. We did a lot of work a while ago to index supplements to starting pay. Um, then we had a law passed that made us raise the floor very quickly, and we have been yet unable to re index supplements to reflect what it would truly be as a portion of starting pay. And to be honest with you, many of the employees in the district are finding that juice is not worth the squeeze on supplements. And um, advanced degrees. I know we've talked for a while around advanced degrees, and so interested in figuring out how much that costs and what that looks like to bring back advanced degree supplements. That's not necessarily a story, that's a request, but it is what it is. Okay, Anna. 
Over the summer, um, there were numerous teachers that were struggling to not only pay their housing costs, but were unable to provide their families with food. And um, it was an overwhelming amount of teachers to just see, you know, teacher after teacher and post after post of our own colleagues that were looking for food banks to go get their food, were, you know, looking for a housing bank saying, I don't think I can teach anymore in this county if I can't find a unique situation for my family of two, or even if it was a family of one. Um, so again, just that cost of living um, is really, really hitting, hitting our teachers hard, um, along with contributing to our teacher shortage. TISA money. Um, the district received about 8.4, 8.5 million in, in, in increased allocation for um, TISA dollars this year. Um, and if I remember whichever one of those bills it was correctly, um, since we've reached 47.5, many of the strings are off. So um, part of the story here would be we could use the TISA dollars to help um, with the compression shifting more money to the latter end of the salary schedule. We, we've had to uh, pay so much attention to starting teacher salaries for so long due to uh, legislative mandates. Hopefully we can use some of this TISA dollar or money to tell the folks that have been here, you know, for a lot of times excess of 15 years. What was the amount again, Kerr? Uh, 8.5 8. million. Oh, 8.5 million. Thank you. A little less than that. Okay, give or take. Rod? Um, although Kerr's statement is accurate regarding the total amount of 8.4 million or 8.5 million, charters have to get their share. So <clears throat> our amount would be between 7.1 and 7.5 million. Okay, thank you. Okay, anything else for story on compensation? Rob? So, Kurt hit on it. I, I'd like to hear possibly a little bit more conversation about the, because we're at 48,250 for a starting salary, um, less strings attached to the TISA money. I'm just wondering what is the opinion of the union relative to that? Anybody? Go ahead, Kerr. You're asking me to put numbers down? No, no, We're no. not at that point? Um, no, not numbers. numbers. No, 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 Hopefully no, no, I'm not okay. going out on a, on a limb here. I'm, but I'm <laughs> asking you if it's the union's position that none of that money has to go towards a starting salary. Yes. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Any more story on compensation? Yeah, I think we have some, dare I say, agreement that um, we would like to explore trying to help with some of the compression in the middle of the, the teacher group. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. More? Her? 
I have a data request. I don't have any more story at the moment. Okay. That's all right. Go ahead with your request. Um, we were at Talc Labor Management, I believe. Um, it was noted that the school board had an executive session in which bargaining authority for for the Talc unit was was granted. So I'm we're curious what the bargaining authority is for this year. Well, I think Kurt prefaced what he was saying by saying he has a data request. So obviously conversations between the school board and the bargaining unit and the superintendent are confidential. So um, I'm not sure what the data request is. The data request is for the number, the, the bargaining authority number. I, I thought you just said you didn't want to talk about numbers yet. <laughs> so. Numbers right. for the how to do the TSA. Historically, the employer sets the bargaining authority, and the teams decide you know what that looks like, how how we split that up, and you know in interest based bargaining, we, we don't keep secrets. We, we share all that. So it's this is our first session talking about compensation. Yep. We've always done that before. I'm curious what the bargaining authority is, especially since. It's the same pot that includes supplement dollars as well. So I, I think we would like to present to you how we got where we got to with the board. We don't have that presentation this evening. Um, and I've talked to Dr. Desmores about that um, as she's gathering the information for that. So I am more than happy, obviously, to discuss that. But I think there needs to be a presentation. It's not just simply saying, X amount of money, I think there has to be some discussion as to where we, how we got to where we got. And um, because frankly, that's how that goes with the board. We have to talk to the board about how we're going, how that number has been arrived at, if you will. So um, we can talk in generalities, if you will, but I, I'm not really comfortable unless Dr. Desmore says, go ahead without her presenting to you all the, the how and why. Does that make sense? Kevin? Short answer, no. <laughs> um, for me, baseline is 7.5. I'm just going to let you know what my expectation is. Because you've got 7.5 in TISA money, that's the, base of money, that's the baseline, that's not any of your money. So again, the, why can't we know the number? I have an option for salaries. I can solve this tonight. I will put it on the board. 20% raises across the board. <laughs> All right. I, have, I don't have the number. You want an option, that's an option. I'm giving you a number. Hold on. I had to check with Amy. I just wanted to make sure we were good. So we are at... Um, 16.4 million. That 16.4 million that includes the 7.1 to 7.5 percent of TISA money. All right, Kevin. Sorry, 7.5 million, not percent. Thank you, Amy. Is there any interest, or was there any interest from the board in doing a bonus again related to unspent salary dollars? That interest wasn't necessarily gauged, so I don't have that authority. I have a request. Could you please gauge that interest? Okay. Anything else? Any other parts of the compensation story? Any other requests? <laughs> Kerr, wants, Kerr wants me to ask. Um, <laughs> the money is the money, um, but how much is spent on supplements as a like matter of a matter of course every year you know like I know in order to move the supplements up we have to spend new money so what is the old money traditional money tied up in supplements each year there 
thereabouts, not you know to the penny, but if you told me three dollars, I'd yell, but if you told me like seven point eight million, I might be like, yeah, that seems right. Around five million. Thank you. Keyword around. What's five hundred thousand between friends? <laughs> Okay, anything else? Kurt? Uh, I'm hearing a, a uh, ask to caucus from some of our team members. Okay, do we have a time frame? 15. Is this your kind of caucus? Yeah, we will. Okay.
Alright, I'll call the caucus this time, so Tom, first. We discussed um, kind of where we left off. It's nice to have a number so that we can um, you know, process this and, and put some plans together that are that are feasible. Um, we looked at what bargaining authority was, was last year um, and discussed the difference between TISA and uh, just the general fund dollars. There's there's a lot of misconception around where TISA comes from. And you know, TISA is, is dollars earmarked by the state specifically for increasing um, classroom teacher salaries. Classroom as defined very, very narrowly as we as we like to say. So um, you know there's there's been a lot of news um, politicians touting an influx of cash into the education system and um, it's that's not necessarily the case. So uh, I, I think we can put together some plans and, and have a couple options ready. Um, we just need some time to do so. Okay, thank you. Rob? We had similar conversations um, regarding a plan to move forward um, from here. Um, we also had conversation about what, if any, restrictions are on the TISA money. And, um, trying to get our arms around whether or not in the budget bill there was additional language freeing this money up even more than maybe we think it is or not. Um, we have not formed an opinion on that issue as, as of today. Um, but we share similar interests as TALP with being able to spend the money where we think we need it the most. So we hope to be able to get there. Um, but we're also interested in conversations about how to allocate the money that we've been given as authority to bargain. Okay. Kevin. I don't know why I didn't think of this before, but um, we have made a commitment jointly to re-examine the um, turnaround school committee and so I know last year the turnaround committee did a bunch of really good work and it had some really robust proposals. A year before, really good work, robust proposals, brought them to the table, and then when they were brought to the table, um, were met with, that's not the money we have budgeted for that. And I, my recollection is they were never given a budget, and so I guess my question is, and you may not have to answer this tonight, I'll take an answer in a couple of weeks because we have yet to meet as those committees, but do we believe there is an appetite to increase or what is the budget number for the turnaround committee? Because as I've told several people in emails, if it's only $2 million and we give 4,000 to each person, we can essentially give turnaround money to 500 people and people whose schools might be on the list otherwise or not on the list. So I just, I think if that was a mistake made two years ago, because there was no budget given to the turnaround committee prior to them meeting. And so I just want to put that in the front of everybody's head. And now that we know there's no special pile for supplements, we know if we increase supplements, it will have to come from the 16.4 whatever million dollars of bargaining authority. We just need to know, tell us tonight that's fine, if not, we need to know what the turnaround budget is so when that committee gets to work, they're able to, to, to fashion a proposal that is compliant and acceptable. Do we have any of that information or can it be brought back? Rob? So we entered an MOU to keep the turnaround and transition schools the same Oh yeah, this year, yeah, okay. Yes, this year, so I think you're talking about the next year. Sorry, that's the spring, yeah, you're right. That's okay. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Anything else? Any more stories? You know, we've talked about bringing a few things back when we meet again on the fifth uh, <laughs> curve. I have, uh, just, I guess to add the story. Um, okay. I have a couple of questions about classroom coverage um, dollars. Um, I mean, we've already spoken 
earlier tonight about the, you know, the, the teacher shortage that I know school districts immune to. Um, it's you know, affecting us, I think, a little disproportionately than some of the others in the state. I heard a rumor that Sarasota was turning teachers away, that they're fully staffed. Um, maybe reach out to Sarasota. Uh, but I, I guess what I'm asking is um, when the district notified the top bargaining unit that they had exhausted ESSER dollars related to coverage, is there an appetite to, to bring some sort of payment back um, for folks that are going above and beyond not only doing you know their job but but filling in for a colleague that that's been absent or completely non-existent the current bargaining authority um, was not dare I say delineated as to how that money could be spent so we're dedicated in any way other than the TISA money we know we have to spend that a certain way so I'll leave it at that okay anything else sir how about um, insurance Kevin mentioned that we have to schedule a joint meeting for for health insurance round negotiations for the, the board contribution is any of the the dollars in the, the the figure that you gave us does that include insurance you know money for insurance increases I know that's article 11 but I, I have to ask while we're here um, same answer as the previous answer although we're fairly confident um, and I look at Michael across the room <laughs> That will be where we are with insurance. Kevin? I mean, we spent $19 million last year, so. And, and we've done really good work in insurance task force mitigating the increase to uh, premiums, that's what they're called, premiums to employees of the school district, some of whom are not covered by a collective bargaining agreement, but still get the same deal. So I guess Kerr's question is, is, you know, Michael and I and you and some other people in the room are on that committee. When we meet in October and there's the possibility we may have to do a premium increase, I guess the attitude is because we're not going to be able to build that amount now out from money we have today because we can't project that far in advance. So, I mean, I guess the question is, is the attitude in October going to be well, that's what we gave you $16 million for. You should have thought about it too bad. I want to say no to your question. So um, there is always the ability to go back to the board. Thank you. OK. Anything else? Anything else you need for story, clarification, data request? Article 10 story was the last thing on the agenda for tonight. So is there anything else or what's going on, Rob? Yeah, regarding the TISA money, um, Will was doing some research and it looks like there was added or additional or new language in, in 10 11 62 14 that discusses how the money can be sent or spent, I'm sorry. So um, I haven't read it clearly enough to specify exactly what that means, but there was additional or new language to the statute. It doesn't appear that it has yet been added to the statutes that are online because it was passed during this past legislative session. Can you give me that statutory reference one more time? <coughs> Sure. It, sure. It's 1011.62, subparagraph 14. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Anything else, Rob? I don't think. 
think so. I think we have some work to do um, to get back here on the uh, 5th. And uh, I look forward to bargaining those plans. Anything else over here? You want to call it an evening or Kevin? You're all right with that? I don't see us moving forward with anything else at this point without the information needed. Right. Right. So with that, thank you to everyone who came tonight. All the people out there. Thank you to everybody here, and we will see you September 5th at 4 o'clock. <laughs>